Okay, so let's see if you know enough math to be able to solve this simple math word problem, which is the following. You are in the center of a square room and 25 feet away from a corner. What is the area of this room? Okay, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So we're right in the center of a square room, right? Right in the middle and 25 feet away from a corner. What is the area of this room? Okay, so let's gonna take a look at the answer. The correct answer is exactly 1,250 square feet. Okay, now if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus congratulations because it doesn't take too much math to, in order to uh, solve this problem. We're basically talking about uh, middle uh, level or uh, middle school or high school level mathematics, right? But if you didn't get this right, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I didn't get this right. That must mean that I'm bad in math. No, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, probably means that you forgot this stuff, so no big deal. We're going to go ahead and cover the solution right now. Okay, so the first thing that we want to uh, kind of recognize is that we have a math word problem here. So I always use something called the rule of three. And that is to, re uh, to read a problem at least three times before you really start taking any action. Okay, make sure you understand the information and obviously the question. So once again, we're in the center okay, of a square room and 25 feet away from a corner. So you're probably visualizing this already. You're like, all right, here's a square I'm right in the middle. And that's good. You want to kind of visualize or start constructing a model of the problem. Okay, so you're like, all right, I'm in the middle of a square room uh, and I'm 25 feet away from a corner. So the question is, what is the area of this room? So obviously, we're going to have to know a thing or two about squares and the area uh, of a square. But uh, the best approach, once you kind of read the problem or really understand uh, the problem, is to model the situation by making a nice thing, you know, kind of diagram uh, so you can see the problem. Okay, because oftentimes if you can see the problem, you can see the solution. Okay, so here is my kind of uh, model of the problem. So here is a square, okay? Now here, I have some symbols that are very important uh, to the situation. I'll talk about this in just one second. So here is a square. We're in the center of this uh, square and we're 25 feet away from the corner. Now, if you're right in the middle of a square, okay? So if you kind of just think about this, even common sense, even if you don't know the math, you're right in the middle, well, we're equal distance uh, uh, the, the distance to any of these corners is going to be the same, right? So 25 feet to this corner, well, it's 25 feet to this corner, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we don't need to uh, kind of list out all the corners because that could be confusing. So I'm 25 feet away, let's say, from this corner. It doesn't make a difference because I'm 25 feet away from all the corners of the square. But uh, here, we need to recognize or review what a square is. Now, some of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know what a square is. You know, you don't need to, uh, you know, make me feel that bad because I know what a square is. It's like a perfect little square thing. Well, that's true, okay, but uh, technically it's a four-sided polygon. But let's just review some really important factors or uh, properties of squares. Now, the first thing is that uh, the, the sides of a square or what we call congruent, okay? They're the same side, the same length, right? So this length is uh, the same as this length, the same as this length is the same as that length. And in geometry, you can put a little line right there to indicate uh, that these sides are all the same. But uh, a real important properties of squares is that the corners, the angles of the corners of the square are 90 degrees, right? We call this a right uh, angle in geometry, and it's symbolized by this little tiny square in the corner, okay, that means that that, uh, that angle, excuse me, is 90 degrees, all right? So that's a really important aspect of a square. Now there's another thing 
about this uh, square uh, that we need to kind of study here is that we're in the center, okay? Now, if we continue on this way, we're 25 feet uh, to the corner from here to here, right? So from the center uh, to this corner, we're 25 feet. From the center to this corner, we're 25 feet. So this entire length is what we call the diagonal of the square. So if we're 25 and 25, the entire um, length of that diagonal, okay, is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 50 feet. So what we want to uh, think about here is that we have a triangle here, and specifically we have what we call a right triangle because this angle right here is 90 degrees. Now, why do we need to think about a triangle? Well, because to find the area of this entire square, we're going to have to know the formula uh, for the area of a square. Okay, so what is the formula for the area of a square? Well, basically, it's just the length times the width, but uh, because the length and the width are the same, we're just going to call this the side times the side because the side uh, the sides are the same, so the area of a square is equal to the side square. Okay, so these are, or this um, formula is one part of solving this problem, but there is another formula to get the answer. Okay, now here we have the diagonal of this uh, triangle, but what we need is the side. Okay, we need the side of the square in order to answer the question, which is the area of the square. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to kind of really focus in on the fact that we are dealing with a right triangle. Again, a triangle that has one of its angles as uh, 90 degrees is what we call a right triangle, and these are extremely important triangles in geometry. Now, anytime you come across a right triangle, you need to think about this next formula, right? This is critical, and uh, it's really not a formula. It's something called a theorem. And here it is, all right? So this is called the Pythagorean Theorem. It's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? This is something you want to put into your long-term memory. You're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math, I'll put it right in there into my long-term brain housing group. So in mathematics, there is a ton of formulas that you're going to uh, study over, you know, your uh, courses of, um, you know, um, as you progress through mathematics. And you're going to get overwhelmed with a lot of formulas, but there's some things, again, that you need to kind of put into your long-term memory. Uh, this is one of them, okay, along with the area of a square as well. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? Once again, this is called the Pythagorean Theorem. And uh, this establishes a relationship between the sides of a right triangle. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it works like this, okay? If we, first of all, let me just go ahead and tell you uh, what this is, right? So a, B, and C are the lengths of a right triangle. Now, C, okay, is always the longest side of the right triangle. Now, it kind of looks, hopefully, somewhat obvious that this is the longest side, but the longest side will always be opposite of the right angle, and it has a special name. It's called the hypotenuse, okay? So, C has to be this right here, the longest side of the right triangle, again, the hypotenuse. So, that is what C is going to be. Now, A and B are the other sides of the right triangle. So it's got one of, the, one of those sides is going to be, you know, shorter or smaller. Or in the case of a square, these will be the same sides or the same uh, distance. OK. All right. So as long as you understand that, we can now talk about the relationship uh, between A, B and C in a right triangle. So what the Pythagorean theorem states is that if we square this side, OK, and then we add it to the square of this side, it's going to be equal to the square of this side. So let's just take a simple example here. And uh, of course, this looks like a square, but I'm just going to throw in some other numbers. So let's say this was equal to 3 and this was equal to 4. OK, so if this is 3, 4, well, our um, hypotenuse will be 5. This is what we call um, a 3, 4, 5, a Pythagorean triple. OK, you don't really need to remember that. But I'm just going to show you uh, this relationship, OK? So if you have a right triangle and uh, one side is 3 and the other side is 4, well, the hypotenuse is 5. And we can kind of demonstrate that by using the Pythagorean Theorem. OK, so here we go. So it's going to be 3 squared. Let me kind of erase all this here. So we're going to let A equal to 3 and B equal to 4 for this uh, simple example. So 3 squared plus 4 squared should be equal to 5 squared. Okay, so let's see if this works out. So 3 squared is 9, 
plus 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, so 25 indeed is equal to 25. Okay, so that is the relationship uh, uh, between the sides of a right triangle. Again, the Pythagorean theorem. So as long as you know this and the area of a square, well, we have kind of what we need in order to solve this problem. Okay, so here is our situation now, going back to our square room. Now, the diagonal, the complete distance from corner to corner is 50 feet, right? Because we're in the center. It takes us 25 feet to get to one corner and 25 feet to get to the other corner. So it's 50 feet to go across this diagonal, which is the same thing as this, um, as the hypotenuse of this uh, right triangle right here. Now, we're going to let this variable x represent the sides, okay? Because x, remember, we're dealing with a square. This side and this side is the same, okay? So basically, uh, we can use the same variable, right? So this is x and this is x. It's the same distance. And what we're trying to solve for is the side, right? Once we have the side, then we know the area is going to be the side squared. So if we can figure out what x is equal to, well, all we have to do is get that answer and multiply it by itself, and we'll have the area. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this math here. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a is what? Well, a is going to be x. What's b? Well, b is going to be x as well. But we know c is always going to be the hypotenuse. In this case, it's 50 feet. So this would be 50 squared. All right, so here we go. So it's going to be x squared. All right, so x squared is simply x squared plus x squared is x squared uh, is equal to 50 squared. 50 times 50 is 2,500. Okay, so we have x squared plus x squared, so that means we have 2x squared. We can just simply add the coefficients. So we have 2x squared is equal to 2,500. Now to solve for x, what we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2,500 divided by 2 is 1,250. So x squared is equal to 1,250. Now, uh, a lot of students or a lot of people would be like, all right, I'm getting this right. I'm figuring it out. I just need to solve for x. But hey, hold on here. We already solved the problem. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, remember, the area of a square is the side squared. So in this case, if x is the side, x times x is the area. Okay, so the area is actually x squared. And we just solved for x squared. So right here, x squared is... Uh, 1250 so we will have solved the problem but uh, to solve for x well let's just go ahead and just uh, continue with the algebra here what we uh, what we would need to do is to take the square root of both sides because we have a quadratic equation so that gives us x is equal to positive negative uh, thir approximately 35.35 but uh, here we're talking about distance so x is going to be equal to 35.35 that's the approximate distance of the side okay but the exact area is going to be x times x, or x squared, and we have that right here. That's 1250. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, continue on and solve the problem uh, with this approximation. But uh, before we do that, I need you to do this, and that is to take a look at that subscribe button and say, all right, Mr. YouTube Man, uh, I'll help you out. Uh, now, why or why should you help me? Okay, I guess that's a good question. Well, hopefully you're getting some sort of value out of my content. But, uh, you know, I make these math videos to try to really help as many people as possible. And I need your help, okay? And all you have to do to help me out is to literally hit that subscribe button. It really does allow me to reach as many people as possible on uh, YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this problem or this video, you know, if you didn't get this right, it's, you know, you're not bad at math, okay? I really, and I know this is going to sound kind of crazy as a math teacher of uh, many, many decades, you know, I haven't come across people that are like bad in math, okay? So you might be saying, okay, Mr. Duty Math Man, now I know you're not telling me the truth. No, I am telling you the truth, okay? Uh, pretty much everybody can be pretty successful in mathematics. Now, obviously, other people are or some people are going to be really, really great at math because that's, you know, they have an aptitude for it. But uh, pretty much everyone can have some reasonable success with mathematics, right? So you're not ever bad in math. So if you think you're bad at math, that's the that's your first number one thing that you have to kind of get rid of, right? you got to get rid of that kind of mindset. What you need is great, clear, and understandable instruction. And that's what this channel is all about, clear and understandable math instruction. That is my goal 
for each one of my videos. And if you want to continue to learn from me kind of in a more formal or comprehensive way, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And uh, what we're talking about here is basic middle school, high school level mathematics. So you may want to check out like my math skill rebuilder course, right? Uh, that's a great course. I'll cover the geometry and the algebra necessary to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. So a lot of us uh, students or a lot of people would think, you know, they kind of get a kind of tunnel vision about the problem. They're like, all right, I got to get this side. So they're looking or they're focused in on getting uh, what x is equal to. But if we thought about this, if we're solving for x, of course, x is approximately 35.35. But uh, the area is the question. So x times x uh, is x squared. That is the area. So if we can solve for x squared, well, we have the area. But of course, uh, we already kind of covered that. But uh, if we have 35.35 feet, OK, now this is critical, too, because we are talking about units of measure here. Well, then simply we can just find the area by taking 35.35 uh, and squaring it or multiplying it by itself. And when you do that, you're going to get approximately, now notice this symbol, okay, this little squiggly thing right here means approximately in mathematics. It also, um, well, there's other things that it means uh, in geometry. But uh, basically what you need to kind of understand is that it's not 100% equal to, it's not exact. Okay, so 35.35 times 35.35 is approximately 1,000 for uh, 249 square feet, okay, because this is feet, and this is feet, and we're multiplying feet times feet, so we end up with feet squared, okay, so when we're talking about area, you have to be very, very aware of the units of measure, all right, so if you came up with this answer, that is fantastic, you definitely get an A+, plus. but this, is the, uh, this right here is the exact, precise, right answer, okay, so again, all right, uh, you know, if you didn't remember the math or maybe you never really learned it uh, the first time. Okay, If you were like me back in uh, high school days, and that for me was the early 1980s, I really wasn't paying attention uh, to math at all. <laughs> I definitely wasn't the best student. Matter of fact, I just kind of squeaked uh, through. It wasn't until after I uh, served in the Marine Corps, did some other things in my life. Then I went to school. I was more focused and disciplined and more committed to learning, okay? So you can't really go by, you know, how well you uh, did in math in your high school years, especially if you didn't do well in school. It has nothing to do with your intelligence or your potential to learn math, okay? So if you're interested in learning mathematics, you just simply need to get yourself into a good course of instruction and build up your skills and confidence one step at a time. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.